Hi you guys, welcome back. Well today we're going to be removing the radiator off a 2005 GMC Yukon Denali XL that has a 6.0 engine that's a 1500. First thing we're going to do is we're going to take off this cover that's over your radiator. We're going to remove these plastic clips and put your plastic spill trays under your car so you can catch any spills that happen. You can use a door panel tool or a screwdriver. Once you got that center pin out, you can just pull it right out. Just go around and remove all the tabs. Go ahead and remove the cover and set it aside. With an 8mm socket, go ahead and remove this top engine cover. Go ahead and set it aside. Okay, if you look on the passenger side, you're going to see the air intake box, which holds your air filter. Next, we have your mass airflow unit. Next, we have this plastic hose that goes into this plastic decking that connects into your throttle body. What we're going to do next is we're going to take a screwdriver and we're going to loosen up this hose clamp so we can separate the hose from the mass airflow unit. If you can't get it out, go ahead and go to your throttle body and loosen up that hose clamp. Remove it from the throttle body and you'll get better leverage to loosen up and remove the other end. For some of you, this may look a little intimidating, but trust me, this is nothing. All it is is a big plastic duct with two hose clamps on the ends. Next, we're going to take off this hose. This is a special spring clamp. This is a tool that you can find at Walmart for about 13 bucks. This tool will remove this clamp. If you don't have that tool, use this NASCAR tool, pair of vice grips. Once you have the clamp out of the way, go ahead and remove the hose. Next, we're going to use this door panel tool to remove the clip that's holding the hose from your electric fan housing. You can find this tool at Harbor Freight for about five to eight bucks. They're pretty handy, especially if you're working on door panels. But if you don't have one, just use a large flat screwdriver. Now we're gonna go on the driver's side and we're gonna remove the upper oil cooler line. First, we're gonna remove this plastic cover. Then what I used was two picks from Harbor Freight and remove the clip. Be very careful, this clip will snap and you'll lose it. They're somewhat hard to find, but you can buy them, so try not to lose them. Now we're gonna go on the passenger side and we're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna remove this hose where the red arrow is at. Once you have that removed, next you're gonna remove the the upper transmission cooling line. Again, be careful not to lose the clip. You'll find that the fittings for the transmission lines are smaller, so your clips will be smaller. Next, if all possible, remove this hose also. It'll make it really easy to take your fan out. Now we're going to unclip the two plugs that are at the bottom of the fan. Once you have both of them unplugged, right where the wire is joined, there's another clip. It's clipped onto the fan housing. You may have to remove that also. You'll see it right here where the red arrow's at. Now to remove your fan, we're gonna to need to remove two 13 millimeter bolts. One here, and one here. Now that you got the two bolts out, we can start removing the radiator fans. On the very bottom, the body's got a lip. The fan hooks on to that bottom lip, but you also have some arms on the sides. So you're gonna slowly move it towards the back and at the same time pull up on the right slightly and then pull out. 
Here are the two arms on your fans that connect into your radiator. These arms help lock in your fan into place. Remember that when you go to reinstall it. Okay, now we're ready to install your fan. If you haven't bought your fan yet, do a little research because there's a wide range of pricing. You can find these fans new anywhere from $80 all the way up to $300. So do your research. Once you've figured out what fan you're going to go with and you've ordered it and received it, that we can now start installing our fan. If you notice, the fan has a slot right here. There's three of them on the bottom. Those three get connected down here on this metal edge. And you also have these wings. Remember I was talking to you earlier about them? This part gets connected to your radiator. It locks itself in. It looks like I'm having a little trouble dropping it in, but I'm really not. It just drops right in. Once you have it dropped in, go ahead and put your two 13 millimeter bolts in. Now we're ready to, on the driver's side, install our upper oil cooler line. You just snap it in. You'll feel it snap in. Then you install the clip. then slide your protective cover over it. Now we can install the hose on top of it. Now let's go to the passenger side. Next, you're gonna connect this small radiator line that's in the middle of the tank, again shown by the red arrow. Once you have that in place, then you're going to connect the upper transmission cooling line as shown by the red arrow. Again, you know how to put that in. Remember, don't lose the clip. And the last hose you're going to connect is this radiator hose here as shown by the red arrow. Now we can install the air ducting. Once you have it in, connect both ends in. Tighten the hose clamp by the throttle body. Then on the other side, tighten the hose clamp that connects to the mass airflow unit. Then install and snap in this cover. Now it's time to fill the system up with antifreeze. This is what I'm using. I got the pre-diluted stuff. It runs about nine bucks. As you're filling your system, you wanna make sure you burp your system. I know it sounds silly, but seriously, they call it burping. You figure they give it a more technical name. Anyway, you grab this hose with your hand and you just squeeze it. Burp and fill your system as needed. Start your vehicle and make sure all the air is out of your system. Once done, put your radiator cap on. Look under your car and make sure you don't have any leaks anywhere. Keep an eye on your radiator fluid level and make sure you don't have any leaks underneath for the next week or so just to make sure you don't have any problems going on. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe and of course hit the bell. Until then, We'll see you at my next video. Bye.
Cause I don't wanna be just friends 